everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Fallout 4. So in the last session, Susan got the shock of her life when she found out that uh, the leader of this institute here, this father character, 60-70 year old man, is uh, actually her son. Not a ten-year-old child like she was expecting, not a baby like was taken from the vault, but a fully-fledged elderly man. She's had a few drinks, puffed on a few grey tortoise, taken off some of her uh, equipment, donning the military cap. And uh, she's, she's done some thinking, and she's st still, in a, <laughs> her mind is, is clouded. Just what does she do? She doesn't know in the long term, but in the short term, what she does know is she is here. And uh, the Institute is open to her, so what she needs to do in the immediacy is have a look around, listen to what the people have to say, and then when the time comes, then make her choice. So uh, that's what we're going to be spending, I imagine, all of today's session and probably the next couple of sessions doing is actually just taking a look around the Institute here and seeing who we can talk to and what we can find out. Now we do have some things to do whilst we are still here, and now we have to debate whether or not we want to carry them out. We still need to, well, meet the division leaders. That's something that uh, Sean has told us to do and we will do that. <clears throat> we need to decide whether or not we're going to give this holotape to Proctor Ingram for the Brotherhood that we uh, ins inserted into the uh, computer when we first entered. God knows what information is on here. Do we want to give that over to the Brotherhood? At this moment in time we don't know. We need to definitely locate Dr. Lee, see what uh, see what she has to say, say about the Institute. That'll be an eye-opening experience, I imagine. We have a feeling that uh, she's not going to have good things to say about them. And we also need to try and find some kind of a serum for uh, Virgil. Now, Susan believes there's no smoke without fire. You know, her son... She's beginning to believe that he is now her son. She's got no reason to lie, she doesn't think, and you know, having, de de having dealt with many a, many a criminal, many a person in interview and interrogation, she likes to believe that she has that instinct when people are not telling the truth. And she has... Either he's a very good liar, or he is indeed telling the truth. So she does believe him. Now he's clay, he claims to be wanting to help humanity, that's what the Institute, Institute are doing. But uh, as I said, there's no smoke without fire, Susan believes, and uh, the people up above seem to be scared of the Institute. She, the since that she's met a hostile. Virgil tried to escape the Institute. Why would he do that if these people are wholeheartedly good people? So there's something not quite right. Their aims, their goals might not be quite as they seem. Not quite wider than white, these people. She has to find out for herself. Operating at full capacity. So, oh my god, it's just freaky. Human looking synths just walking around. I mean, who's who? Is this a, is this a synth? Is this a person? Is this a Corsa? Welcome to the Institute, ma'am. Are Corsas human? Are Corsas synth? It's all just one damn big confusion. No wonder people up top are paranoid every time they they suspect somebody's been a synth. Remember, she, she remembers thinking back to to Diamond City when a man shot his own brother, thinking he was a synth. So it is clear, they've got fresh running water. <laughs> it's 
small bonus. Right, let's just have a bit of an explore here. This place looks quite large, quite sprawling. So, so she's just got to go with the flow a little bit. She's uh, she's probably walking around in a bit of a daze still. She doesn't know who to speak to. Doesn't quite know who's who. Right, this Holdren. Is this one of the leaders? Kind of a some kind of quarters. Come on, they got their own little balconies. They can set the temperatures and light levels, I and mean, it's all very advanced. Yeah, sit down, have a have a glass of bourbon, whilst overlooking here with the nice little water features and greenery. I can certainly understand. Why people might be happy here, but... Oh, God, look at these beds. Look at these beds. Very comfy, very welcoming. Couple of glasses, a uh, fresh water by the bedside table, towels, probably fresh running water in the showers. This is like the <laughs> this is the most luxury she's seen since since she woke up from the vault. All of this, th all of these things that were taken for granted before the bonds fell, such simplistic things as fresh running water, fresh clothes and linen, and this place seems to have it all. She hasn't had any of that for a number of weeks. Bioscience. So bioscience is there. Over there is something else. Can't quite see what it says. Something, something, something. Medical ward, maybe over there. Okay. Well, there's nobody in here. Huh? It's an honor to have you here, ma'am. You synth? Are you human? What the hell's going on? What the hell's happening? Stormtroopers? Are you human? All systems nominal. No, nope, he doesn't sound. Is anybody human here? Report anything suspicious to the SRB. What's this? Advanced Systems Notes. Let's have a little listen to this. I think he's actually lost his mind. I can't believe he really expects me to do this. I've always been on board with the Gen 3 program. It makes sense, but this? Nothing good can come from this. How am I supposed to explain to my staff that Sean wants a child synth for no immediately apparent valid line of research? And to base the physical features off records of his own childhood? It defies all logic. No, I can't do this. I won't. Ooh. It's okay, so that, uh person made reference to Sean. Further indication that he was telling the truth and he is our son. Look at that. Nice chair, footrest. Look 
face showers. <sighs> what Susan wouldn't give to be able to step inside right now and wash her cares away. Look at all these bottles of alcohol. Maybe not all of the staff members here are uh, in agreement with Sean's idea to create this child synth that he did. Oh! Hello? God knows what time it is. Bloody hell, it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Doc. But, uh, sorry, time and tide wait for no man or you know woman. What happens when people get robots to do all their work? They get fat and lazy, that's what. Real people doing real thinking and real work. That's the future I want. Okay, so he appears to be maybe anti synth. This is kind of interesting. Is there some kind of fracture in here in the Institute? That's how you feel. Why not leave? Because we could do so much more. And no, everyone is obsessed with these damn synths. It's wasted potential. That's what it is. In any case, I suppose I should say, welcome. Perhaps a fresh perspective will do some good around here. Wow. Lawrence. What others call complaining, I call critical thinking and challenging assumptions. Okay, so that's definitely an interesting conversation. Short, but very interesting. He is anti-synth. The holotape, the person on there, didn't agree with this child synth, so there's, it's not all bright and rosy here. Not all bright and rosy at all. Okay, I think we're just in a big loop. We need to be downstairs. That's where we need to be by the looks of it. These are the quarters. Boardroom. Okay, let's go down. This level is the level where we were. Uh, okay, still another level. This is. Oh. Down a bit further. Right, okay. Almost done. Okay. Just need to tighten up this primary drive servo. That's the third primary drive breakdown this month. As far as I'm concerned. Phase out on these older models can't come soon enough. Oh, I don't know. Most of them have lasted long past their projected lifespans. If you ask me, they were built pretty well. I can't argue with that. Even so, I'm ready to see the full Gen 3 roll out. There we go. All set. Unit, you can return to duty. Thanks again. Of course. Our technology must seem pretty advanced by your standards. Doctor? They weren't kidding. You really are here. Well, all right. I'm Allie. Allie Fillmore. You can think of me as the Institute's chief engineer. When Father told us about you, I could hardly believe it. You've been through so much, I think most people would have just given up. If you don't mind my asking, what was it that kept you going all that time? What was it that kept me going? My son. I wanted to find my son. I just wanted to find my son and keep him safe. Now that you've found him, I hope you're proud of the great man he grew up to be. Now, I'll give you a quick rundown of the facilities division, and then I'll answer any questions you might have afterward. As you might guess, we keep the Institute's mechanical and electrical systems running smoothly. We maintain and upgrade all of the systems that make it possible to live and work in a place like this. 
There's a lot of machinery behind these walls that recycles the air and water and provides power to the laboratories and quarters. The work we do might not be as exciting as some of the other departments, but it's at least as important. So, now that you're here and you've spoken to Father, does that mean you're on board? Okay, well we said that we were on board. <laughs> we don't know what we're on board with, but we just said that so that we could explore and conduct our investigations. Perhaps she can give us a bit more of a clue. On board with what? The Institute, of course. Sean implied you operated on a level, if not equal, and at least similar to the rest of us. Curious. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the facilities division, I'm happy to discuss it. Hmm. Okay, maybe we need to be careful what we say here. Don't want to arouse suspicion. Who built this place, originally? Has it been here long? The construction of the Institute is the work of generations of scientists. The original survivors of the war, our progenitors, took refuge in the basement of the old Commonwealth Institute of Technology. Over time, their sons and daughters dug deeper into the earth and built increasingly sophisticated habitats and laboratories. It's a process that's still going on today. Even now, we're digging out tunnels for new facilities and infrastructure. Just think what this place will look like a hundred years from now. I hope I'm there to see it. Allie. Hi there. Something I can help you with? I'd like to know about the people in your division. Of course. Dr. Lawrence Higgs is our mechanical engineer. He oversees the major life support and security systems. Power distribution is Dr. Evan Watson's area of expertise, and Dr. Newton Oberly is in charge of food and housing. He coordinates with bioscience to ensure that our meals are balanced for optimal nutrition. We also make use of a number of synth units for low priority maintenance and labor. Hmm, okay, don't go away. Dr. Fillmore, what's on your mind? Oh, look at that. It must be a challenge to meet the power demands of a place like this. Absolutely. We scratch and scrape for every precious ounce of voltage that we can. Over the years, we've learned a few tricks that help supplement our power budget. When necessary, we can tap into select sources on the surface. We take only what we need, of course. Fortunately, Advanced Systems is always working on new solutions to generate more energy. It's a good thing, too, because the demand is always increasing. <laughs> You don't even want to know what a single use of the molecular dematerializer consumes. Molecular dematerializer. Sounds dangerous. So what? Hey. So from what she said, these people are living here, they're digging more tunnels. Do they have any intention of going above and helping out the people above there? Or are they just content with... Re remaining down here uh, and, uh, and living the rest of their days in this in this tranquility because if that's the case Susan is gonna find it hard to just sit down here and put her feet up she's a she's a she's a working woman she she knows that there are people above ground that that, that need help she's a person that likes to help people and if there are people above ground that need help and we're sat here in our little ivory tower living the lap of luxury she will not be comfortable with that alright so we've got uh, robotics that side and bioscience that way we'll go left remember to keep unnecessary power consumption to a minimum don't recharge unless your primary levels are below 2% also, if you haven't patched your navigation software, do so after this meeting. The last thing we need is more synths bumping into walls. All right, that's all for now. You can resume your duties. Oh, God. This is just making Susan feel so uncomfortable. You know, it was f fair enough. Nick Valentine took us a little while to get used to him, but you know, we did. This is a completely different level. There are synths all over the damn place. Hi, Doc. It's a real. 
power demand jumped another 5% this year. I fix one relay and two more start to fail. At least I'm not bored. Okay, I think we might have missed a conversation with him. We're all looking forward to working with you. Okay, robotics. idea where that'll take us. We'll <laughs> not test it out just yet. Right, so this is continuing round. We'll just go and take the other robotics. Whoa! You're here. Glad you made it. What in the hell? What in the, the all that is holy is? This is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. it is far more comfortable to think of them as machines, so we can do what we want with them. If you disapprove of the work we do here, Dr. Benet, you know where to find the teleport. Just a moment. I never said that. I'm simply trying to open everyone's eyes to new possibility. Well, it's an unwanted the distraction. The hell? We're men of science. The hell? We do well to remember. The hell? It's a lovely day, isn't it? Welcome to the Institute. Please, step right this way. What the hell just happened? Whoa! They are creating sense before our very eyes! Oh, this is this is not right. This is just not right. Doc, who's this, who's in charge here? If you ask me, the synth software could use a little more debugging. Excuse me, Doctor. You've arrived at a momentous time. Our third-generation synths are a true breakthrough, the culmination of centuries of research. It's no exaggeration to say that they're superior in almost every way to human beings. Yeah, she does believe he's getting carried away, but we don't want to <laughs> rock the boat just yet. What makes them superior? The list of improvements is exhaustive. I can talk for an hour and still not cover all of it. Imagine what you could accomplish if you could live without fear of hunger or disease. Imagine what you could create if you could spend every waking moment of your life as you saw fit, with no need of sleep. Like I said, a momentous time. Excuse me. Dr. Logan? All our divisions are important, but I tend to think of robotics as the first among equals. 
Well, they don't have very much to say, do they? Okay, this does. Please proceed directly to processing. Where's that other guy? He wasn't. He didn't seem happy. Theoretical limits. He didn't seem happy. Today is full of possibilities. Hey, Doc. Ah, it's you. You're finally with us. I just like to apologize for any trouble our sins may have caused for you on your way here. They, of course, couldn't be told of your identity. And they have very specific protocols for protecting themselves and institute interests. Most of which I designed myself. Not to make problems for you, though. I, uh... Will you be staying with us, then? I'm thinking it over. Well, I hope you do decide to stay. It would mean a great deal to Sean. If you require anything, especially as it pertains to synths, please let me know. Doc? We're quite fortunate to have the synths to aid us. Okay. They say, let me know, and then when you want to talk to them, they don't want to know. Another lovely day, isn't it? You can't say anything else to the people. Okay, well, I think Susan's seen enough of robotics. I think she feels quite uh, a bit overwhelmed, really. This does, does not sit right with her. They're creating synths before her very eyes. And the, this doctor here, this, this mad Dr. Max or whatever he was called, lording over these synths. Oh, they're better than humans. They're superior than humans. Their technology, they, they can go wrong. It's, what is these people's infatuation with these things? Yes, we can understand utilising technology to help us out as human beings to maybe make a few chores here and there easier for us, relieve some of the burdens. But what is the purpose of creating an army, a population of, of synths? Why make them so, so, so similar to humans? What the hell? For what reason? Bioscience. Where on earth are we going to fi find this, this serum? I must remember to try and grab the serum if we can. Probably another elevator in here somewhere. Storage, ammunition. Yes. Not that the depreciator's picking locks like, but uh, we need to find out as much as we can. Clean plates. Such a novelty. Oh my god, it's just one door after another here. What's going on? FEV lab. That's it. Ah. Um, it was locked, so I don't know if our presence will be well. What the hell? This is a completely different location all of a sudden. <laughs>